<laughs> Hello, everyone. Look who's here. <laughs> Brittany is here. She's going to spend the night with us for like about, I don't know, 40 minutes, maybe. I always I'm say so that. excited. <laughs> it goes longer and I don't mean it to, but we have like so many wonderful questions and comments. Oh. So how are you? I'm doing great. Good. I, uh, I had a really fun day. I'm Good. in Toronto right now and there was an insane snowstorm yesterday. Oh, wow. We got stuck inside the house. There's like two feet of snow at least everywhere. Um, and today, you're the first to know this. Today, okay. I actually uh, found my wedding dress. So yeah. I'm in the best mood ever. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's exciting. Yeah, Aww. I'm very excited. All right. Good. Congratulations. <laughs> you got me in one of the, I'm always in a good mood, but I'm like in an extra good mood today. Oh, that's so exciting. Was it something that you thought you were going towards or was it, you went, it was just, you had to have it? Was it was a little bit of a different direction than I thought I was mm -hmm. going to go, but it was pretty well in line with what I thought I might like. I okay. think, um, I, it's so funny. I think actually, you know, being an actor and trying on so much stuff all the time, you get to know kind of what sure suits you and what doesn't. What and uh, mm -hmm. so I kind of had like a bit of an idea going in. I knew I didn't want a strapless dress because I am one of those people that no matter how well it fits me, <laughs> I will attempt to pull it up. Only. I know. And then I, I was like, and then all of my wedding photos are going to be me looking like I'm doing the chicken dance. Yeah. And I really just don't want to do that. So that was my only like absolute no. No. Okay. Oh, well, that's exciting. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I'm loving Thank that. You. I mean, Thank who doesn't so love weddings? What about the wedding veil? That trilogy that's out? Oh my gosh. And those. I heard it was absolutely incredible. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but. Um, oh, it's, you know what it is? The things it's, you know, it's a wonderful, fun romance, right? And of course mm -hmm. the, the leads are amazing, but what I love is believe it or not. And I love them. I love Kevin mm -hmm. and I love Lacey who doesn't love Lacey, yeah, right? Of course. But the costuming, the wardrobe girls, yeah. holy moly, they're amazing. Yeah. Yes. <gasps> the costumes. Awesome. I, I mean, they're outstanding. You, you'll love oh. it when you watch it. You're going to, you, you might get some wedding ideas yourself. While yeah, I'm watching I might it. <laughs> All right. So you have quite a few holiday movies with Hallmark and other mm -hmm. places, Joe, but mm -hmm. you're always um, the supporting role. And I'm like, when is she going to be the lead? And you were, you were, do yeah. you have any like, um, like favorite memories of any of your, your, Christmassy type movies or I have I mean honestly every film I do I feel like I end up with such special memories from it nice. um for different reasons all types of reasons um you know I've the very one of the very first films I ever did was a Christmas movie I was 11 or 12 years old and oh. um it was really special to me because I got to work on it with my mom and dad and it was one of the first films that I got to work on mm -hmm. with them and now that I've gotten older I've had a chance to work with them a couple more times which has been so so special um but yeah I've had such fun memories from all of them I did a, a movie in Canada that was called Loving Christmas which I'm the lead of and it's going to be airing next year or this year 2022 okay. uh but Christmas, so very far away. It's gonna feel like years <laughs> to me. Yeah. Um, but my best friend played my best friend in that movie, so that was really incredible. So and okay. then, sorry, I said okay. I love that. I can't wait. Yeah, to see it yeah. So that was really special, and I got to be in the film with a good friend of mine as well. So it was one of those things where it was just like such a special experience because I was with people that I love so much. Mm -hmm. um, of course, holiday date was just such an incredible experience. It was my first time being a lead on Hallmark and it just felt so special. And, you know, I'd been so, so wonderfully welcomed by everyone at the network and for them to put their faith in me to, yeah. to take on a leading role felt really special. And it, it just, that film will always have a very special place in my heart as a result of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have incredible memories from all of them. So, since we're talking about it, I'm going to show you, and you could probably see it, but Lillian saying that she loved holiday oh. date. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lillian. Yeah. That makes me so happy. All oh, people are, oh, 
Everybody's so chatting. Everybody saying, oh, see these comments, guys. <laughs> I know. We looked through all of them at the end, but I just happened to pop up as she, as you're oh. saying that she was saying that. You know, you were in with Jesse and Fiona. You did mm -hmm. um, Christmas Next Door, and yes. I loved. I don't know what it was. I love that movie. It I, it makes me. It's like a feel good movie. It's like one of my favorites, and I have to get <laughs> in my jammies and oh, I love have it. cocoa and watch it. Literally, mm -hmm. look, I even have like you know the mug for it. And I like the two of you because I felt like you were real sisters. Oh, thank it, you. I mean, yeah, that one was fun. Yeah. She's just really, really lovely. We got along really, really well. Um, one of my favorite memories from that shoot is actually there is a part where I meet, I think it's where I meet Jesse's character for the first time and mm -hmm. I'm making cookies with the kids and I go to shake his hand and I, I just had it. I just had this desire to really... <laughs> just shock him and make him laugh on camera because uh -huh. mm -hmm. Jesse's a fantastic actor. Yes. He's very serious about his work. And I was like, I'm gonna make him laugh. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the person to make this man laugh and break character. <laughs> so I filled my entire hand with icing. And <laughs> I don't know if this is a good, I mean, like probably not the best thing to do when you're in the middle of filming a scene. Uh -huh. And I filled my whole hand with icing. So when I stood up to meet him, I went, hi, it's nice to meet you. And I slapped my hand into his hand and icing just went everywhere. <laughs> and he actually laughed and they used that take in the movie. I love so it. that was fun. <laughs> I love it. That was good. It's like improv, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and actually, um, I, I know that this is, has nothing to do with the movie currently, but Jenna Weir, who played uh, Jesse's niece in that movie. Mm-hmm. She is so incredible to anybody out there who is looking to find their newest inspiration for like music and acting. I mean, oh, that wow. girl, really? she was starring in Matilda when mm -hmm. she did Christmas Next Door. And she's incredible. Mm -hmm. And now she's 18. She's such a grown up. And she's releasing all of this brand new music and it's incredible. I've had one of her songs stuck in my head for like five days. Oh, we're going to have to like look her up. Oh, she's incredible. All right. She's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, mm -hmm. we always love hearing those little fun tidbits. Oh, she just now, needs to become a superstar because she's incredible. Anyways. Really? Okay. I'm going to look. I'm actually going to pay attention, go back, <laughs> and, and I know who she is, but I'm going to go yeah. back, really pay attention to her as a child, and then go check her out and say, oh, so you, she's so incredible. Now, do you keep in touch, or do you, of course, she knows who you are? Like, if you left a comment, yeah. yeah, so it's actually kind of funny. So Jenna's done a couple of films for my parents as well. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just one of those people that, you know, I run into her every once in a while and I stay in touch with her as best I can. But it's tough because there's, especially because she was so young at the time when we mm -hmm. met, we like, we have, we follow each other on Instagram and like, yes, you know, there's little sense. things there. But she's just one of those people that anytime I, anytime I hear from her, anytime I hear from her mom, I'm always just like, so, so overjoyed. Cause she's just such an incredible and kind young human. That's actually very nice to hear, you know, mm -hmm. like someone who's been in the business since she was little and it yeah. hasn't gotten to her head. She's humble. She's doing her yeah. thing. That's nice. That's nice. And I, hear. I think too, like there was a part of me that sort of looked at her and was like, Oh, you're, like, I remember being your age and being as in love with this as you are. Wow. And I stopped for six years mm -hmm. um, to go to high school. But for her, I just looked at her and I was like, oh, you love it. And you're so sweet about it. Like none of this has gotten to your head. You're a superstar. You're the star of Matilda. And mm -hmm. like somehow you don't out the trash. you're the most incredible <laughs> young human yes. being I've ever met. Yes. So Aww. how is this real? See, uh, and she's still the exact same way. That's nice. Yeah. I actually like to look that up too, because then I'll share it with my students. It's a good, a oh. good role model for them. A good thing. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about your parents. Some people don't realize how talented your parents are. Tell us about mom and dad as much as you want to share. Oh gosh. The whole family is incredible. <laughs> my mom is such a force to be reckoned with. She is incredible. She has had so many careers. Um, she was a social worker for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And she went into real estate and met my dad. And my dad had had the craziest career as well. I mean, he um, 
he went to school on an opera scholarship and was an oh, opera nice. singer and, you oh, know, was is. the Phantom and Phantom of the Opera. Wow, <laughs> Most people don't know that about him. He's pretty incredible. incredible. Yeah. And uh, Jean Valjean and Les Mis, like he just had this mm -hmm. incredible career. And he he had transitioned a little bit with his career as well. And then when they met, he wanted to go back into film. And so this sort of brainchild came to be where my mom used her experience in social work to write a series of uh, workbooks for teens to help them deal with various aspects of growing up, like peer pressure and bullying, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And they decided together to turn it into a series for teenagers for schools. And then my dad started working. He, he had been working uh, at a production company for a while at that point. And then when I was about nine, they'd finished that up. It was doing really well. It's actually still used in some schools um, yeah. across the States and in Canada. And, um, and my dad decided to start his own film company and my mom had been writing a lot and they just became this like force to be reckoned with as a pair. They, my mom writes, she's producing, she's, when she's producing on set, she is there from the minute things start until the minute things end. She has like 800 eyeballs. She sees everything. <laughs> it's remarkable. Mm -hmm. um, and my dad has transitioned from producing to directing as well. And, you know, they, they work with writers, they develop scripts, they produce, they direct, they do everything. And it's so incredible to see them work together because I feel like very few people have the capacity to work together in the way that they do. I mean, when they're not on set, they're working from home. So, you know, my dad's got his little office in the basement, my mom's upstairs working, and then they're meeting in the middle and talking about things. And then they fly to this country and are on set for 16 hours a day, every day for a month. And then they come home and they do it all over again. And it's just, wow. They're That's incredible. Cool. And my sister is also the most remarkable human being. She just doesn't happen to work in the film industry, but she's a chemical physicist. No. I sometimes mess that up and say physical chemist. And I don't think that's correct. <laughs> Clearly I'm not in the sciences. Uh, I mean, that's amazing though. So, yeah. but you all have like these big brains, like you're big thinkers <laughs> and super talented. So you yeah. had the bug, like, when did you get like the bug, like, and say you wanted to, did you do ballet or something? Am I right? And no. Yeah. yeah. So there yeah. was performance in you from when you were young, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually started acting when I was about six. Um, I was doing ballet classes and someone came in and said that they were doing an open casting call for a commercial uh, and they needed a bunch of little ballerinas. And I heard <laughs> my little spidey senses <laughs> perked up and I begged my parents to let oh. me go to this open casting call. And they finally agreed to let me go. And out of, I think they auditioned like a thousand girls. It felt like a million because I was six. I was like, there's 8 billion people here. <laughs> uh, my mother's like four. Uh, but they auditioned a ton of people. And I was one of the little girls that got to do the commercial. And I was so excited. And I just remember being, I remember being on set and being like, I am, this is the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> just like having the best time. And uh, Ooh, my parents, mean, yeah. They you're graciously just, allowed me to keep doing it. Oh, so I love that. because yeah. you're like a little one, you're young and you're a ballerina and you're doing <laughs> like, oh my gosh, what would be better than that? Being a princess, maybe, or, or a unicorn. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> a now, princess unicorn combo <laughs> would be the only thing better. I, when I was doing my little research, cause I like to research mm -hmm. and I was like learning so many cool things about you. So when Aww. you, um, when you're doing your different projects, they're different. Like mm -hmm. what is the, like, there was, I found so fascinating, but it was limited what I could actually read about it mm -hmm. for national geographic. You had like a, a wildlife series where you were a host yeah. or something. How in yeah, the so do you even get to do that? Yeah, so that one is actually one that I produce, write, and host. I found um, oh, okay. Yeah, 
and my parents produce it with me. My dad directs it. My mom writes it with me. So it's, um, it's a series where we really wanted to be able to travel. And mm -hmm. we had this idea of making a series originally for kids by kids about the world and bridging a lot of, you know, things that you don't see in North America or you don't understand as a separate culture to you. So we wanted to do this series and we sort of thought, okay, I'm comfortable in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. My mom and I are good at creating storylines based on what is happening around us. Mm -hmm. My dad is good at directing. He's a producer extraordinaire, obviously. Yeah. So let's just do it. So we got together a small crew and we went to South Africa and we just sort of started shooting it and we hoped it would work. And Nat Geo saw it and they said, you know what? We love it, but we want it to be a general audience's show hosted by a female. So we went that direction with it. We recut it. We designed it to be an educational series that was open to all audiences from age three to age 85, 100, 140, hopefully one day. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we just, we just created this show where we could learn and explore. And, you know, there's only one other series that's hosted by a woman, Bindi Irwin. Um, oh, cool. Or at least there was when we first yes. started. Yes. And and it was one of those things where, you know, I think sometimes part of the reason my parents wanted to do it was sometimes little girls feel that they can't mm -hmm. aim to do something because they don't mm -hmm. have that representative for yes. them. Sure. Um, and not always. I mean, a lot of little kids dream of being an astronaut, even if they only see men astronauts mm -hmm. on TV or whatever. But, you know, it was one of those things where to them that was really prominent in that girls can be brave too. Yeah. You know, and now, so that we just decided to do it. How so, can we see it? How, how would so I, I believe it's on, it's on a streaming service, but I can't remember which one. I think it might be Amazon prime. Okay. Um, but wherever the Nat Geo library is, it is there. Okay. Um, it is available to watch. Um, and if you just search uh, Wildlife Quest, you should find it. Um, but you, I think you can also buy it on Apple and all okay. those fun places. But it, it shows on Nat Geo Wild a lot. So it's on it's on air a lot as well. And and how many do we how many um, episodes? So we have two seasons so far. I believe cool. there are 10, 10 or 11 episodes each. It's insane to me it's been a while of course because of yes. covid we haven't been able to travel four, so like, how many episodes do we have but i think there's at least 20. okay that's a yeah. lot that's amazing i'm gonna yeah. look i mean i use um national geographic all the time in my classroom so yeah. i'm thinking i'm gonna like look more into this i just didn't have time to do it but i was like fascinated now so okay so obviously um animals are you an animal lover? <laughs> of so much. I know. And what about the amazing safari movie with Lacey? Like, what about <laughs> that? Like, were, yeah, that were, one was a lot of fun. Were you there? Were you in the safari? I thought I heard her yeah. say, or someone say, like, there's a scene where that um, giraffe is like right there. Like, it's all is that's oh, real. Oh yeah, no, it's all real. Oh, so we, God. um, we flew in to Johannesburg. It was actually oh, the first time Lacey and I met. So we got hmm. on the plane together and we were on a plane together for like 18 hours, oh, sat gosh. beside each other and we became immediate friends. We we had had <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we went to Johannesburg and then we shot, um, a lot of the film about a half an hour outside of Johannesburg at a real wildlife reserve. Um, and yeah, it was really crazy. I mean, we actually drive up to the lions. And the, the one thing I will say about shooting with animals is sometimes it can become complicated when they're wild. Yes. Because <laughs> you can't guarantee what they're going to do. So we yeah. had like crews in armored vehicles that were protected from the animals. Mm -hmm. and we were like, yeah, no, we're fine in this open vehicle, right? <laughs> the lions won't come to eat us. Oh right. When, when I was younger and new, I live in New Jersey, there was, um, there was this safari that you could drive through before you mm -hmm. went to the 
amusement park. And I did it once and it scared the life out of me because I guess it was the baboons. They got, now this was, this That's was like they're vicious. Yes. Years ago, they got on top of the car and they literally ripped the top. It was like a softer covering or something no. and ripped it off of the car. And I was like, I don't think I'm cut out to do a safari, even though I love animals. I just don't think I have the bravery. No, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Actually. What I will say too, is from having filmed love on safari mm -hmm. um, and having hosted the Nat Geo show. Yes. One thing I will say is you never want to get caught near a baboon. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to be around an angry baboon. They are not friendly. They are, they're, they're scary and they're vicious. And they're powerful um, and big. You don't so yeah. powerful. Yeah. And their teeth are insane. Like they can just, it's, it's, they're so scary. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But mm -hmm. no, we, we were shooting where we were shooting. I don't think they had any baboons, but there were monkeys mm -hmm. and the monkeys used to run along the roof at night and wake me and Lacey up. And we would like text at three in the morning. Be like, did you hear that? Yep. Did you? Okay. It's just monkeys. It's not like burglars coming. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like, the roof off. Right. Um, cause of course we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, what else I know. Doing? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> The burglars are the animals. Exactly. Like, what an experience. Like that's like a once in a lifetime kind of thing, right? Yeah. Like, you can't. And so I feel like whoever was with you on that set, you had to have bonded with them because yeah. like this is so unique and amazing. Well, yeah. what was actually really incredible was that was one of the films I worked on with my parents. So oh. my parents were there. Um, Lacey, of course, was there. John Cor was there. He was incredible. Um and yeah, we all became really, really close. We had like just the loveliest time. The Also, the staff at the reserve that we were filming at were just mm -hmm. such incredible people. They welcomed us so wholeheartedly. We had full reign of the place. Like it was just, it was a really, really special experience. Did you get to try any of like local cuisine? Not a ton while we were shooting. I mean, of course they had, they had, um, they had a kitchen there and they would cook for us and stuff, but because they're cooking for a film sure. crew, it wasn't a huge film crew because we were all on location, but because, um, because we were shooting on location, it was really like food that was easy to cook for everybody. And right, it was right. like a lot of fish and salads and that sort of stuff. Um, but I have tried some of the traditional food there and it's really incredible. Right. I, I, um, my parents, well, my grandmother and my mother were chefs and, oh, wow. um, like, so I've tasted, you know, things from all over the world. And mm -hmm. I, I was just curious if, um, you know, because they do talk about the food in that movie a bit that it is, that it does, I don't know, not that they talk about it, but it's there because, mm -hmm you know, she's there living there and, and appreciating yeah. all the new stuff. So well, I was the main always, thing, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just curious. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. No, the main thing that I remember, I mean, even from my time there when I was on safari separately mm -hmm. was the fruit. The fruit is so incredible. So yes. that, that was everywhere. I mean, there's fresh papaya and like oh just the most incredible fruit you've ever mm -hmm. tasted. Like the grapes taste better there. Everything well, is better. Of course they do because they're there instead of shipping them over or something. Yeah. That's amazing. They're yeah. so good. The not, is so like, good. Like it's not farm to table. What is it? It's jungle to table, safari yeah, it's to free table. To table. <laughs> it's pretty great. Now, okay, so now we take a whole other shift. Yes. And tell me about the marijuana conspiracy. <laughs> I was like, what an inch because it's based on a true story correct it is yeah in my mind i, I know was, it's pretty crazy yeah so it was a really fascinating story i remember i was shooting love romance and chocolate in belgium with lacy and will when i got the audition for it <laughs> uh -huh. um i actually taped it from my trailer which was very funny because i was like making this romantic hallmark movie and i'm like i'm gonna audition for this movie about marijuana i guess i don't know <laughs> what is this um, and yeah, it's a really interesting story. It's based on a true story about these women that essentially did this social experiment mm -hmm. in the late sixties, um, 
and they were, for lack of a better term, sort of held captive, even though they had the freedom to leave. They didn't really, a lot of, yeah, yeah a lot of the women who uh, signed me up. out. <laughs> I know, it's insane. Also, because now that we've gone through COVID, yes. I'm like, don't tell me I can't leave my house. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go outside. <laughs> Breathe some air. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it was this crazy thing that happened where there was a social experiment done where they wanted to see the effects of marijuana use on productivity in women specifically. So okay. um, they wanted to gather these women and have them in, uh, you know, a control group and then a group that was actually smoking and, um, and have sort of this study where they would have these women work in sort of a controlled uh, space where in order to make money, they had to make macrame. Okay. So for each piece that they made, they got a certain number of tokens. And those tokens at the end of their time, after 90 days, would equate to a certain amount of money. And they were paid X number of dollars for the total stay. However, when they brought up that they weren't comfortable staying and they wanted to leave, they were told that if they left, they would make nothing. They wouldn't make anything from the money that they'd hoped to make from being a part of the study or any of the money that they had made based on their tokens that they had collected at that point. So a lot of these women felt sort of stuck because they were all there because they they needed to either pay off debts or yeah. find finances to start a business or move or start their lives. I mean, there was one woman who was homeless, who was just trying to find her footing and mm -hmm was willing to do what it took, was trying to get jobs, was trying to do everything. And this was sort of her golden ticket out of that. So it was this really fascinating story to be a part of. And I, I feel very grateful that that I was trusted um, by our mm -hmm. wonderful director, Craig, to play Jane. She was an awesome character to play. I was the hippie of the group, mm -hmm. um, if you will. So it was very fun. It, it, it's actually, um, it kind of gave me a bit of anxiety when I was watching pieces of it, but it was only because I felt bad. Like I, I'm a viewer, so I know what's going on and happening. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like it, it was for lack of a better word, sort of abusive. If you think about it, right. Yeah. What, what you're saying. So, um, it's yeah. kind of eye opening. I, I really suggest that everybody watch it. Of course, it's not something that you want to watch with your entire family, right? It's more of a no. mature audience, but it's a good- Yeah, I would go with like PG-13. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's good. It's a good movie. It is. Thank you. Now, um, how do you, how do you, like probably because of your parents is what I'm assuming, but how do you find such interesting roles like that? How does that come across? Not that you're not talented because you are, but my mm -hmm. point is that's so unique. Mm -hmm. How does something like that come your way? Well- for me, I have a wonderful agent uh, in Toronto who I work with mm -hmm. who, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about sort of the the types of projects I want to work on. I love making rom-coms. I love making movies that fit the Hallmark space so much right. because they're so enjoyable. They're so lovely to be a part of. But there is something as well to be said for, you know, being somebody that's easily boxed in. Mm -hmm. And for me, I have a really bubbly personality. I am mm -hmm. friendly. I love to like, it's easy for me to turn around and say, okay, girl next door role, simple. But sometimes it's fun to say, okay, but I know that I could do that. Yes. I just need someone else to know that I can do it. I just need somebody else to believe that maybe I could be the interesting choice for this. Right, right, right. So he's really good about finding independent films, smaller films, films that are, you know, maybe looking for, for somebody that, that isn't going to be the obvious choice for something. And those are the places where people are more willing to give me a chance currently. Okay. Um, and I just love acting on all levels. So for me, whenever that chance arises, even if it's just an audition, it's so much fun to figure out who this person is and figure out their redeeming qualities and, you know, build this person. Um, and every once in a while, 
someone gives you that chance. And Jane was a was one of those situations for me. And luckily for me, Craig, the director, um, I'd actually met previously. And he, when I was up for the audition, he was like, I love Brittany. I would love to find a way to include her in this. And he was one of the people that really pushed to bring me on board as well. So, you know, it's just about having people in your corner, but also doing the work and making sure that, that when those opportunities arise, you're prepared for them. So that's, that's really it for me, but my agent is wonderful. And, you know, I've got really great people that believe in me. So that that's good. I was also, I mean, I'm sure of that, but I was really thinking about you and your talent. Like, I think that sometimes people get afraid, right. To try new things or do something different, or maybe, you know, you're going to fail, but you're not. And I can tell because you have all these different things that you've oh, done. Thank you. And that's I so really sweet of you. No, it's true. And I really enjoy each of them. I mean, we all do. So like kudos to you because that that, you. that brings us like, the, I, I like, I love when an actor is different every time I see them. And mm -hmm. it's not like, I feel like it's the same. It's the same type of character each time, you yeah. know, sometimes that happens and that has to do with writing and directing. I get that, but mm -hmm. that's not the, with you. You have something special in for each one. I have a question that has What's to do with like, um, like for instance, all these different little things you've done. Like in one movie, you're speaking French, the chocolate movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you have to learn it? Do you really know how to speak French or, or you fooled so, around with it for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> so I studied French growing up um, mm -hmm. in Canada. Our, our two languages are English and French. Yes. Um, so most students will study French, even if it's just from grade three to grade six. Um, okay. But I decided to put myself through the torture of continuing to study it until grade 11, grade 12. Mm -hmm. I am terrible at it. Like, <laughs> like deplorable <laughs> but my accent is good this is my the thing my teacher always said to me she was like you can get away with it because you've got the accent down oh, and okay so for me i can do the accent so if i can figure out the words mm -hmm. i can say it in a way that sounds like i can speak french but if okay. i actually have to carry on a conversation it's a lot of like hand gestures and miming and you know asking how to say things because i i'm not great <laughs> well, you, you fake it till you make it kind of thing, but you exactly. did it. I love it. And now what about ice skating? Did you have to learn to ice skate or do you know how to ice skate or? Well, yeah, I just, I, I did a lot of things as a kid. <laughs> I'm realizing this now. Thanks mom okay. and dad. Um, I actually learned how to skate when I was little. So my, my big sister was a skater and I remember going to the rink with her and just being like, I want to be like Vanessa. She's the coolest person on the planet. So I was like, oh, no, we got to put her into skating too. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> so I started skating when I was really young and I actually mm -hmm. like, I loved it. I was, I was skating like nine times a week. I was doing three morning practices at five o'clock in the morning for a synchronized skating team when I was like 10 years old. Honestly, oh. just bless my parents. They were prepared to wake up way too early. If somebody asked me to wake up at 5 a.m. right now just to drive mm -hmm. them somewhere, I'd be like, yeah. no. Why? no, why are we awake at that time? That's rude. Yeah. But also, you know, they did it for you. But they did it for me. So I learned how to skate when I was really young and I became like a little competitive figure skater. <laughs> so <laughs> all I these skates back all on. I know all these things worked for you though, because yeah. it pops up in your different movies. You're like, Oh, I could do that. I can, you ride a horse? I can do that. <laughs> I can figure it out. I can ride an elephant. If I can ride an elephant, oh, I can ride a horse. This is true. You can. So you have some new things coming your way, right? Yes. Um, things that I know about, there might be things that you know about that we don't know about. You want to share, <laughs> but, um, you've got a new movie coming out in April, I believe the call mark. Correct. Yes, and I do. Yes. And you also have Rama, uh, Rama drama. I want to say it correctly, which I think I will be attending. So that would be so exciting. I know so I, much fun. I, they keep pushing, we keep having snow and things and they keep pushing my date at school back. And I'm like, no, you can't push it back anymore. Cause Absolutely I need to not. get on a plane and go to Florida. So, <laughs> so right. what would you like to chat about first Rama drama or your new movie? Oh, either. Oh. Either, either, either. 
I'm excited so, about both of them. Okay, so let, let's talk about the new movie. Okay. Does it have an official title yet or not? No. So <laughs> it's gone through so many. So it was originally titled Dog Named Indy. Yeah. And then they were toying with Love Rescued okay. um, when Hallmark officially purchased it mm -hmm. and was like, we want this. It's ours. Yay. I'm so Yay. excited. Um, they are looking at some other potential titles. So hopefully we will have an official title soon, okay. but I'm just going to keep calling it Dog Named Indy for now because okay. that's the script title that I saw and I know. And eventually when we have one, then I'll just start, you know, bombarding everyone with the title of the movie. But right. we're going to promote it for you. Let me tell you, we're excited. We, we being some of us have some ideas of like a, like a premiere party. And we were wondering if, yes, we are. We have with games and cocktails, we are set. Oh yes. I um, like this. <laughs> we're so excited. Oh my now, gosh. That's what we're like, where's there a post? Is there a poster? And then no, there's no poster yet because you don't Not have a yet. name yet. <laughs> but there will be a poster soon. Okay. There will be a poster soon. Everything is coming really, really soon. Okay. Um, I know with the holiday season, of course, Hallmark is so busy that time of sure, year. Sure. So now that they're moving more into the, the first quarter of the year away mm -hmm. from winter, um, there will be more stuff coming really, really soon. So hopefully and, we'll have, you know, a little trailer and a poster and all that jazz. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really sweet movie. And if you like puppies. We do. You're just going to love it. Oh my it. gosh. So now I have a couple questions. What yes. is the exact premiere date? It's April, right? Currently it's April 23rd, I believe, the Saturday. Okay. Yes. Um I just double check that, but the Saturday that is near April 23rd, I think it's right. April 23rd. No, I think you are correct on that. Okay. And also, um, is there going to be like, probably there will be more, but they'll, we'll, they'll do like a hashtag for us so that yes. we can like tweet and everything. A hundred percent. So once right. we have a title, we'll make sure that there's a hashtag going around. I am going to try to be as on top of it as possible with communicating with Hallmark as well so that I have that information and I can share it. Cause I know okay. sometimes it can be tough to get those things, especially when it's a movie that was acquired, not made through Hallmark because of course sure. you have the title a little earlier in that case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as soon as those things are available, throwing them out there. All right. What well, can you tell us about it? Like the storyline itself. Right. So it is such a sweet movie. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start with that. Okay. But it is a movie about a young woman named Bella mm -hmm. who owns a, a dog rescue that her grandfather and her grandmother started. Mm -hmm. And she decides when she's done school that she wants to move back and live with her grandmother and help run the dog shelter. So she moves back and she runs it and she is running one of her uh, annual fundraisers and very quickly finds out that something has gone slightly awry mm -hmm. and unbeknownst to her, the sponsorship for the shelter is no longer continuing. Uh, the company that had provided all of the dog food is suddenly no longer going to. And so she's in a bit of a panic and she ends up meeting very handsome and unfamiliar <laughs> man who she doesn't know. And it turns out that he is the son of the family who had the dog food company. And he as somebody who has been in the army for a long time, is sort of ready to let go of that space um, in order to move on with his own life. Um, but he didn't realize that the shelter was leaning on this company so hard. So it's sort of them getting to know each other, learning more about each other, Bella fighting with everything she has to try to find a solution um, because the last thing she wants is to let go of all these dogs and you know, it's something that matters so much to her grandmother. It's something that matters so much to her. And beyond that, it's something that's made a big difference because they they primarily shelter um, dogs that have been released from duty. So a lot of these dogs, you know, need to find homes where they can just be dogs. And uh, so for her, it's about making a difference, you know, having a therapy dog be partnered with somebody who was a veteran. Um, 
having a, a dog that is a veteran paired with somebody who has a safe home where they can feel loved and accepted for the rest of their days kind of thing. So it's a really beautiful, beautiful story about these two people sort of at crossroads in their own lives. And, and Indy, the dog, is sort of the catalyst for everything. She's the reason that they're willing to find their own paths and yeah. I don't want to give too much away, but it's no, don't, don't give any more away. I well, love it. That's a good teaser. <laughs> so my, I have a couple of questions. So of course the, the male lead is Chris McNally. Yes. He, the wonderful we, know, Chris. we know he loves dogs. So, I mean, he must've been in love in this movie oh, he's yeah. he, with animals. Oh yeah. He's like a natural with them, isn't he? He's just, yeah. He brings his own dogs onto set where, you know, for when calls. Yeah. And um, we're like, why can't they be actors too? Oh, I had a question. The dog that played Indy, just it, the uh, the actor. Um, do you know the name? Because um, yes. when I was, yes, I was talking to a gentleman who, um, who, who is in the business of rescuing uh, mm -hmm. military dogs and all of that. And, and he's a military gentleman himself. And he was looking up the info about the movie and we were chatting about it. And he's like, you should put, they should put the name down for the dog as an actor, because he knows personally people will go and follow and want to see the movie because of it. Oh, cute. Yeah. So the dog's name is Moxie. Moxie. Yeah. And she was so sweet, but also just so smart. Like, I swear this dog is smarter than most people. Oh, my God. I was like, I'm sorry. Do you want to do my job? Because like, you could probably do it better. Yeah, yeah. Just, you just need to learn how to actually speak, and then we're golden. Yeah. Take, well, take it all. Now, what was it like working with Chris? What little tidbits can you give us? So wonderful. Chris is somebody that takes his job to heart in yeah. the most beautiful way. Yeah. He really, really cares. Like he really cares. He, he gave everything to bringing JR to life. Um, that's his character's name, JR. Mm -hmm. And he did it in such a beautiful um, human way, which I know probably sounds a bit strange, but I think sometimes as actors, we can get caught up in the, conversations or in the moments that are being filmed and kind of forget the soul of the person, um, especially when we're playing somebody that is fragile in any way or has any fragility to them, because it's really scary as people to be fragile. Sure. Um, and Chris was completely unafraid of just being exactly who he needed to be as that character in every single moment. And it was really beautiful to see. He's really, really wonderful. And he does an incredible job in this film. We're, we're very I, excited. Because I was opposite him, but he was incredible. Did um, So I know your mom was one of the writers, or I don't know if she was the writer, but mm -hmm. she is one of the writers of the yeah. story, correct? Yeah. Um, did you have like in mind, so I know as a writer, you have this vision of what you want someone to be. Did yeah. that happen or did you just put it out there and that's how they auditioned? Do you know what I mean? So, I actually don't know. I mean, I, I know my parents because they developed so much of it and were sort of the people looking at everything. They mm -hmm. really took the reins on it. Um, but Chris was top of the list and always was. So when he said yes, it was huge. Um, I know when I first read the script, I pictured, you know, tall, dark and handsome. So mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> there Chris you go. only kind of fits that. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but it's funny because like all of the people who are in it are just exactly who you was thought? meant for every role. I mean, Good. Jane Eastwood, I don't know if you know who she is. She is whew, that woman is a force. She is so phenomenal. And she plays my grandmother in the movie. Aww. And I love her so much Aww. and Umberly Gonzalez who is in uh Ginny and Georgia which is mm -hmm. where she's currently yes. best known from but she is also just incredible she did a she film is. for Lifetime called Maps and Mistletoe she over is. Christmas um she plays my best friend and she's incredible in it and everyone is just so amazing and um 
Chris definitely led an incredible set. Yeah. So um, when we have a minute, you'll see in the chat. So he yeah. has a, um, they're, they're here. They showed oh, up in force. He has a, um, a, there's a fan page that they made yes. for him. And so they'll all be promoting it. They'll be going crazy promoting that. <laughs> so Guys, after, call me, let me know what you need from me. I will give yep. you everything I can. <laughs> we will. We're going to, no, we really wanted to have like a premiere party, like play that. games. We have little, we have ideas in the works. So you know what you should fun. do? Yes. What? I wonder if we could make this happen. We should okay. get like, once we have the official title, get okay. like a bundle game made. Oh my gosh, you know me. We, you know me in the bundle games, right? I, I don't know if you realize I'm always wait. Yesterday, hold on, I have it still here next to me. Yesterday, I had on um, Viv Leacock and um, Natasha Burnett, and so they they play on When Calls the Heart, and yeah. I always break out my When Calls the Heart game. I had Jax and Cassie on; they're amazing, but we should do it. I love Jax you can, so much. Do you know they do it virtually? To, I'm gonna. They do it for a virtual. I'm writing it down virtual <laughs> game, but you would have to really help out with that because. Oh, that's not a problem. Yeah. You know, I talk all the time. Okay. We, I love we might, we might have some, some, something that okay. we're going to plan on doing in the all future. Right. So, you, you know, I can definitely l let her in on some of the know-how to make okay. that. Okay. It would be so amazing. Thank you. That would be so fun. We already have things in the works. We have a lot of different things that we're planning, but that is like on our list. I'm so excited about that. That would be very fun. So now tell us about Rama Drama, because I want to go and I want to see you. Oh, well, I want to see you. Okay. Um, tell us I am going on. so excited for Rama Drama. It's going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. Just because I know it is, because the last one was so much fun and it's only going to get better. Um, it is just such a blast. It's like such a down to earth space where you get to interact with so many people and everyone is there. They're just having so much fun. And like, I don't know, I made so many friends. I made so many new friends at Roma Drama and I it's so it. much fun. You feel like you get to know both sides, right? I get to meet all of these people who are in these films and I get to meet all of the people who watch them, who give us careers. Um, and it's just like such a, incredible space it, and everyone has so much mutual respect for each other and there's so many fun aspects to it and like it's just it's so much fun I was so sad when it was oh, it but also like very yeah. understanding and yeah, very yeah. glad that they made that decision because ultimately they're keeping everyone a Thanks. lot safer yes but I can't wait to go I can't either. Someone was like, oh, well, I was going to enjoy warm weather in, in the winter. And I was thinking, you're going to be in air conditioning. We're going to be okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, and honestly, in Nashville, it was crazy hot. And mm -hmm. I was just inside the whole time. Yeah. So I was very they have, I know they're going to have like a breakfast if you wanted to participate. They yeah. have like games. I mean, I'm oh, yeah. so, Yeah. I heard Trevor's going to be playing, like putting together puzzles with people. Oh, Firstly, goodness. that's amazing. Second, who doesn't want to put a puzzle together with Trevor Donovan? I don't know because he's so adorable. Oh, I love him. Me, me and my fiance want to put a puzzle together. Yes, with yes you do. Yes. He's the best. He is the cutest ever. I love all the things he tweets out. He's like, you know, every day I wake up and look at Twitter to see what he has out there. He's so cute. <laughs> I love him. Oh, that's too funny. Oh, He's great. Thing. So, He's so you got, do you have anything else that you're allowed to share with us? Like another project that I'm not aware of or, or no, no? I actually have two other films <gasps> coming out people. that are romance movies. Mm, you're busy. Yeah. Last year was, I don't know how, but like 2020 and 2021 were very great years for me in my career. Mm hmm. Like who to thunk? All but right. they were. Um, so I have two more films coming out this year. One is called The Story of Love. Um, my co star, Franco Lopresti, is so oh. fantastic. He's so sweet, so handsome, so lovely. Um, so there's that one. And then I have another one coming out. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the title. 
That's okay. You don't have to say the title. title. But as soon as I'm allowed to say the title, I'm going to post something on Instagram okay. because I'm very excited about it. All right. Um, that one's a very, very fun movie. It's very funny. Um, it's very sweet. The costumes are awesome. Um, so I'm very excited about that one. And then I also have a film that has been doing the runaround um, festival wise, two oh. films actually that have been in festivals that are finally going to be available to watch as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, so one of them is Shadow Town, which is a psychological thriller drama thing, movie that I did. <laughs> You're doing your thing. You're being different. See? Yeah. So there was that one. And I believe it's going to be um, on a streaming service this year, like pretty soon. It did yeah. um, have a couple of showings at a few festivals. And now they're looking at navigating it um, onto the streaming side of world. So hopefully it'll be available for people to watch. Um, I'm very, very proud of that movie. It was a very difficult movie. And um, it's one that I'm, I'm very, very proud of. How long did something like that take to film? So we shot that one in, I believe it was 18 days. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I thought it would have been like something like long, but Okay. No, I mean, we had, we had some pickup shots. So all in, it was probably about 20. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it was a movie that was incredibly challenging for a number of reasons. Um, but it's a really cool Scandinavian noir film that I shot in Iceland. So it's, it's really. Iceland. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, different. Was, okay. Really all right. Um, but yeah, so that one's going to be available and I really hope people will watch it because I worked very, very hard on it and I hope that people like it if they watch it. And if they don't, that's also okay. <laughs> um, you just have to remember to like put it out there. Let yes. us know. Oh, I will. <laughs> okay. I'm going and to. Then, oh, I'm sorry. Keep going. No, go, go. No, no, no. I okay. didn't know you have another one out. So yeah, I have another I one. We're going on six <laughs> now. Where's my hand? Six. So then, and then there's um, another one. Um, that's also going to be doing some festival stuff and hopefully will be available to watch this year as well. Um, called uh, Dancing Through the Shadow, which is a film I worked on with my family as well. Um, it's actually a true story or based on a true story um, about my ballet teacher from when I was in grade 10 at the National Ballet School. Wow. And uh, it's a remarkable story about her. It's a small part of her incredible life but she was a dancer um in beijing during the communist revolution and she left china eventually and had this remarkable life but it's it's a short snippet of her life of growing up and falling in love and it's a it's a really beautiful story and she wanted me to be a part of it um, and there was a young woman in england who helped her sort of see the world she was living in with the right well she introduced her to to a side of politics that she didn't necessarily see as viable. Okay. And when she decided to leave, was instrumental in helping her find a way to get out. Um, and so it's a small role, but I was very honored to be able to to be a part of telling her story. So that's another that's, one. That's actually that that's weird. That would be weird for me because it's mm -hmm. something that really happened. And, mm -hmm. you know, and so now you're playing the part in it. So, I mean, yeah. that's really special. That was very special to yeah. me. Yeah. Especially because Tia, my teacher, she um, she'd never really told anyone her story. And mm -hmm. when I say my mom is incredible, this is part of what I mean. Somehow, mm -hmm. after meeting my mom and dad, Tia decided that she wanted to tell them her life story. And she'd never told anyone ever anything. So she retired the year that she was my teacher. Mm -hmm. And she was a very tough teacher. So when she was my teacher, I was like, she's cranky. I don't like her. But then I got to know her and now I'm sure, in love sure. with her because I know yeah. her. But yeah. of course, when you're like 15 and somebody's telling mm -hmm. you, you have to do 500 plies, you're like, I don't like you. I hear you. <laughs> so of course, you know, I think she's retiring. She's going to leave. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I came home from school one day and she was in my dining room and I was like, <laughs> hello. Why are you here? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but so I got to know her incredibly well. And uh, she's such a remarkable woman. She's in, She's just, in, she's so insanely 
remarkable. She's in her 80s and she's still dancing. She's no. just like, uh, she's so, so remarkable. You, you definitely have to, when all of these things start to release, <laughs> you're going to have to put it out so we can keep track. I promise. And I promise. I will share all of it. It'll be constant. I'm just, as we're talking, I'm not cutting you off. As we're talking, I don't want to lose it because there's like so much good stuff. Just different <laughs> things in the chat. This is Janice. Aww. It says, with my love of animals, Brittany and Chris, I know I love this movie. I'm listening to the cast. Sounds great. So she's, you oh, know, I'm of course, so talking about the indie. We're going to call it the indie. <laughs> the yeah. indie movie. <laughs> indie. I like yeah. it. The indie. Yeah. And then um, I'm just looking. I'm trying to scroll up because there's so much. What else do we have? There's, so many, there's so many comments. Yes, I know. They're beautiful. I know you could see them too. I'm just taking my time. Oh, they were getting anxious. They wanted to hear about Chris. Like oh, what God. you said they didn't already know. <laughs> they, they, I think they know a shoe size. I mean, I mean fair. <laughs> Candace says, I'm absolutely loving this movie already. I love dogs and really all animals. And I have a lot of family members who have served in the military. So this is definitely a movie for you, Candace. Yeah. I like it and too. there's some really beautiful moments that, that look at that and it might make you cry. Oh, I like that. But you know what? He's amazing. He's talked about... He said that when he takes on his role, like sometimes it takes over him, like he becomes. So mm -hmm. what you were saying is definitely what he was saying. So yeah. I can imagine it is going to be emotional. Yeah. Um, Christina says, who came up with the storyline and how did Chris get picked for it? So we kind of talked about the Chris part, but the storyline, I know your mom was heavily involved in it, but like, mm -hmm. how does something like that come about? So this was a script that my parents have been working on and have had sort of at their fingertips for a really long time. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly how the storyline came to be, um, mm -hmm. but there were a lot of changes that happened. I know, you know, originally the story had a slightly different direction um, in terms of who was in the military and what was going on there. Um, but it's just a matter of sort of playing with the script and finding the right space for it, finding the right story, finding the right dialogue and everything like that. Right. So they really played with it because they wanted to make it as perfect as possible. Um, but as for the original storyline, I don't actually know. Okay. So it was Chris not picked just because he's Chris. Yeah. He's like perfect for it. As you he's said. so perfect for it. He was so perfect for it. <laughs> so here it's, is, this is Arlene. And she says, every actor needs to stretch their boundaries in varied roles. So they grow in their craft. You definitely have the talent and skill for diverse roles. Bravo, Brittany. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Arlene. Yeah, it's it's true. It makes my heart feel happy. Aww. <laughs> and there's like so many. I know I'm going fast. You could see them too. Oh, this part, this is, I always ask this because I always am excited about knowing this. Did you do a chemistry test with Chris McNally first? No, but we did meet over FaceTime. Um, and we chatted a bit and then when he and I were both able to get to where we were filming, we spent a ton of time working through things. We did a full read through just the two of us oh, um, nice. on the script, um, and talked a bunch about the characters and we, we just spent a ton of time trying to get to know each other and know our mm -hmm. directions with the script and with the story and where we wanted to go. And, you know, we would have dinners and stuff like that when we were actually filming just so that we could spend a little bit more time together and get to know, get each, to know other. each other. Yeah. yeah. Get into your roles. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like um, you might have sort of the same style a bit like of how, cause remember you said you want to know their backstory, mm -hmm. like your mind develop. And I feel like he's probably, this is just me projecting yeah. like the same. So that was nice that you had time to like chat. And, yeah. 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 We um, both have our own um, methods to our madness as I like to call it, but um, we're both, actors that really do like even though I didn't necessarily see his prep work um sure. it's just obvious that he is somebody that has this character built and knows him and knows you know the style of clothing he would wear and and all of these little things um so I think we're quite similar in the fact that we both put a lot of prep work into whoever mm -hmm. we're creating and playing um which is really fun it's really fun when you are on set with somebody who has developed this person and knows them so well, because then those two people get to play, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's 
it's like almost stepping outside of yourself and seeing who you've created exist in a way. True. I get it. This is hearing that her dance instructor wanted to tell Brittany's mom her life story. I have a feeling Brittany takes <laughs> after her mom. Thank <laughs> you. I hope so. My mom is so cool. Oh, oh I love that. Okay. Um, um, these are just comments and things. I don't know. If, I think we covered like people had asked, I could see in the chat that they were, you know, wanting to know if you could speak French and stuff, but we, we covered all of that. Very badly. If you're just tuning in very badly. <laughs> Very I love it. Oh, goodness. Okay. So this was so nice. Thank you for spending the evening with us and Thank talking. Thank you so much for inviting oh, me, for having sure. me. Sure. And we will definitely listen. We will definitely be in touch with you because we are going to do the premiere. We're going to we're going to get all excited because we have a lot of dog lovers, people who are in love with the military, who are in love with you, who are in love with Chris. I mean, it, it's just going to be like a really good, feel good um, type thing. And um, so you're also, you did all of that stuff because I see someone saying something about your wedding, all that stuff in, in between you're kind of getting your, your wedding plan too, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> How? Yeah. How? Do you sleep? sometimes <laughs> not often not no often. i do i just drink a lot of coffee <laughs> okay that's okay whatever works for you right <laughs> i don't even drink coffee and i'm hyper i don't know what would happen if i don't even drink caffeine oh yeah so, no if i have more than one coffee in a day it's just bad news bears for everyone like, ah! i am all lunatic <laughs> Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Now I'm going to say good night to them and you could just hold on for one minute, Brittany, stay in the studio and then we'll, we'll say goodbye to each other. Um, don't forget next, well, this Sunday coming up, I forgot what day it was. I have a balloon pilot coming on. Oh, I'm so excited. It's only, we're, we have a balloon pilot coming on because on When Calls the Heart, they're in a hot air balloon. And we find out that the character, of Chris's character, Lucas says, he's a, he knows how to, he's a balloon pilot. He knows how to work the hot air balloon. So we want to find out about the history about it. It's, it's amazing. We're so excited. They, I've got some cool stuff planned to go along with it. So I will see you all next Sunday. I think it's the 23rd at eight. Okay. Good night. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'm going to just end the broadcast.